Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, welcome again to uh, Midday Motivation. We're thankful for each of you. So as you start coming in, if you just take a moment to uh, first um, just drop the word that uh, symbolizes uh, how your day is going. And then secondly, take a moment to um, to share with, with all of your Facebook friends uh, that we're on and that we'd encourage you to... Uh, to join in with us and so um, if you would you know take that moment uh, be sure to share that word that um, symbolizes how your day is going and then take a moment to share uh, with your Facebook friends uh, how um, that you want them to join in to the group care that we're participating in right now and so um, just um, give you a moment to do that and then we'll start with a moment of prayer. And I'll take a moment to share myself. All right. So as you're coming in, uh, we're, we're thankful for each of you. Um, again, take a moment just to... Um, Put that word out there that symbolizes how your day is going, how uh, your mental state is at the moment. And we're just so thankful for all that God is doing. So let's just take a moment to go before God in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for blessing us, Lord. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for all that you're doing on our behalf. We thank you for keeping us and giving us another day to bless your name. We thank you for your love and your kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We thank you for every soul that's represented now, as well as those that will tune in at a future time. We ask that you would be with us, Lord. Uh, we're asking that you would bless us, that you would keep us, that you would preserve us. Let us follow your template that we might rejoice. We're also asking that you bless all those that are going out to work each day. And we appreciate all of the essential workers uh, for all that they do and putting themselves in, at risk and in harm's way that we would all be beneficiaries of that. And so we ask that you would cover and bless them, keep them and protect them, Lord God. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the honor and the glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So we thank God for all that he is, is doing for us. We're so thankful. And it's so exciting to see uh, all of you, you know, putting those words forward and, and, and just seeing that so many great things are happening. And, and so I, I'm glad to see that there's a lot of positivity flowing. And so we've been spending the last few weeks just uh, taking a little bit of time out to uh, discuss God's template for living. And uh, we, we understand that as we encounter life's challenges, God has blessed us uh, with a template on how to navigate those things. Uh, the first thing he's given us is the ability to understand Secondly, he then uh, has us to acknowledge. So we understand that we have been subject to futility, uh, that that was God's idea, but he also subjected us to hope. And so when things start happening in our lives that just don't make sense, uh, we're able to then come to the next phase of acknowledgement that these things that seem senseless, these things that seem to be contrary to uh, what a loving God would allow to happen in our lives, uh, he, he allows these things to happen and they're not just happening to them. They're also happening to us. And so us spiritual believers also uh, are subject to futility or subject to vanity. These things happen to all of us. Uh, but the difference is we have hope and the hope that God brings to us, which is the third step uh, in that template for living uh, is, is solidified through fervent prayer, which is the fourth phase of this template. And we talked over the last few days over uh, the concept of fervent prayer and why fervent prayer is so important because it is that download that God puts in us that allows us to come out of the prayer with a confidence that we didn't have before. And we've been using Paul as, as our, our template as we've been studying this and, and understanding this. And so we're going to take it to the next stage and that is to receive confidence and to be able to praise God for what he has done. And so uh, I'll, I'll call your attention to Romans chapter uh, number eight, which we've been dealing with Romans eight and Acts 27. 
Uh, these are the two passages of scripture that we've been uh, using to so solidify our discussion. So Romans 8, we're going to look specifically at uh, verses 16 through 18 and then skip down to verse 28. Um, and so what we see here is that God had reassured us that in this fervent prayer uh, that there are going to be some things that the Spirit would do. The Spirit would help our infirmities. The Spirit would also make intercessions, groanings, which we talked about, uh, being sighs, uh, that we are going to have God interceding for us. Uh, but if we pick up here at verse 16, it says, The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so, that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And so what God is, is sharing with us here is that the same spirit that is making intercessions, the same spirit that's helping our infirmities, it is that same spirit uh, that is going to bear witness and give us confidence when these situations occur. And it is going to bear witness of the fact that the transformation of going from being fearful and being scared to being confident is part of the trans transition of God taking us uh, to become the sons of God. In fact, the scriptures tell us that he's given us the power to become the sons of God. And we also know Acts 1, 8 tells us that we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon us. So the power to become the sons of God is that power that comes through the Spirit of God. But when we recognize the power of the Spirit, we also know that the Spirit is helping the weakness of our flesh. The flesh is 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 very weak. And, and Paul picked that up when he said that the Spirit is willing, uh, but the flesh is weak. And so we need the Spirit of God to be able to motivate us, to unctionize us, to be able to have that confidence to stand on the hope that we have, even when all of our circumstances are, are escaping us. And so when we couple that with Acts chapter number 27, here's where it, it lines up. Uh, at verse number 40, and we're going to look at verses 40 and 44 in particular in Acts chapter 27. Verse 40 says, And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea, and loosed the rudder bands, and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind, and made toward shore. And let's skip down. And it says in verse number 44, and so in verse 43, a bunch of people were trying, they were going to kill the prisoners. But instead, God said, no, don't kill the prisoners. Um, if you can swim, jump overboard. Uh, and then verse 44 says, and the rest, some on boards and some on broken pieces of the ship. And it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. In other words, every single person was delivered safely unto land. Now the beautiful thing about that is that God had said almost 21 days before in prayer uh, with, with Paul that every single soul that is with you, all 266 of them are going to be delivered safely. Not a single soul would be lost, not a hair would be lost, everyone would be delivered. And now we see the outcome that God had promised in prayer. See, many of us are trying to stand on things that some voice in our head has told us, but we never prayed about it. And, and that very well may be deception uh, that's going on, our own desires, our wants. Uh, you know, I, I heard a, a preacher say that uh, there are three voices that speak to you. It's the voice of your need, the voice of your greed, or the voice of your seed. And many of us, we allow the voice of our needs or the voice of our greed uh, do all the talking. But what God is trying to get us to understand is that you need to hear the voice of God. And in prayer, when our spirit is bearing witness with God and we're hearing the, the intercessions that are being made on our behalf by the spirit, 
that's praying for us, it is in that, that moment that God can download in us something that we can hold on to. And what was downloaded into Paul was that a reassurance that Paul, you have to get to Caesar. There's a mission that you're on. You have to be delivered successfully. And so therefore you're gonna get there and everyone that's with you is going to get there. And therefore you're not gonna die here on this ship. And so he stood on that and he, he told everybody that they need to be of good cheer because God told him what was going to happen. And here they are, the fulfillment. They're able to have that confidence and to rejoice at the fact that the very thing that God said was going to happen, happened. That is the power of that fervent prayer. That is the power of this template that God has given us, that we understand, that we acknowledge, that we hope, that we enter in fervent prayer. And now we have confidence and we can actually rejoice and we can celebrate. In fact, it's interesting that when you kind of think about what God has done here and in the very beginning of, of the next chapter, if, if you kind of think about Acts chapter number 28, the very beginning of it, it starts where it says, and when they had escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. Now Melita means honey. Uh, and it reminds me of when God said that the word of God, when you, when you eat it, it doesn't taste good going down, but it is sweet uh, coming out of your mouth. And so in other words, what God was saying in this particular situation is that uh, for many of us, we don't want to go through trials. We don't want to go through tribulations. We don't want to go through suffering. We don't want to go through challenges. We don't want to deal with setbacks. We don't want to deal with disappointments. But what God is saying is you have to go through these things. And you're not going through them just for yourself. Now, there's value in you going through these experiences for yourself because it matures you. It gives you an experience or a track record with God. But the other reason we go through these things is so that we will have a testimony to share with somebody else. That we will have a victory that we now can share with somebody else. As I think about what we're going through right now and, and this whole coronavirus situation, one of the things that we're hearing more and more about is the why there's so much importance for there to be testing. And the reason you want to know if there, uh, it, why we need more testing is because there needs to be a, an understanding of who has already been infected, who has created antibodies to this infection, and then we can start having what is called herd, hum, uh, herd immunity, meaning that there are enough people uh, that have an immunity to this, that it is, starts to become protective to others. The reason I bring this up is because the same thing needs to happen in the spiritual realm, that there needs to be enough of us who've been through some things with God, that we can be confident when everyone else is scared, that we can be confident when everyone else is in turmoil. Uh, there needs to be enough of us that ha have been through enough things with God that our first inclination is not to be fearful. Our first inclination isn't to run. Our first inclination isn't to cry and say, woe is me and why is this happening to me? But there needs to be some who have been through enough with God, who've experienced enough challenges and who've gone through enough things that they can stand flat footed and proclaim, I've been through this with God before. I, I know that my God's going to show up. I may not have gone through the exact same thing, but I've been through enough things with God that I know that he's going to show up. This is so familiar to me. This is, this is so similar to all the things that I've been through with God before that I am not going to uh, be deterred. I'm not going to be scared because I recognize this. If you've ever had what the world will call deja vu moments where, where you, you, you just feel like you've been here before. See, those of us who've spent some quality time going through life's challenges with God on our side, we have those moments that say, yeah, I've been here before. It was right about this moment that God showed up. It, it was right about this time that, that God showed himself mighty. It was, you know, it was right about this time that, that God showed his greatness. And so we can enter into situations with confidence knowing that the God that we serve is able to do this. And, and so it's that optimism, it's that confidence that, that God is, is, is instilling in us that allows us to continue to move forward and, and continues to allow us to be excited about what it is that, that he's doing. And so optimism is a function, the confidence that God has given us. Now, one of the things that I'll point out about optimism, and there have been clinical studies about this, so we're gonna spend um, on Wednesday and Friday, we're gonna talk a little bit more about optimism as it relates to this particular uh, concept, but I, I just wanna kinda tee it up right now just so you can understand it. There have been studies on the power of confidence and optimism. 
And, and one of the things that was just, it was mind blowing to me, uh, because when we get stressed, uh, our body um, starts to um, secrete this hormone cortisol, uh, and it starts to have impact on us. Uh, and they've studied both men and women, and it happens the same. But in women in particular, uh, that when a woman is optimistic, when a woman is confident, uh, then she uh, starts to demonstrate a, a lower uh, significance of two factors, two markers of inflammation. And if we know that anything about our bodies, inflammation is responsible for just about every disease that we, we suffer from. Uh, your body starts to have a, an inflammatory response. And so there is uh, two things that uh, are, are very much tied to inflammation, one being uh, C-reactive protein and the other is interleukin-6. Both of these are uh, at a very low level in confident women, in women that are optimistic. And so there's no coincidence that there's more women in church. There's no coincidence uh, that, that most of the prayer warriors that we've had in our lives have been women because God has a way of using prayer, uh, using this template to empower women to be able to uh, fight the immune response that is taking place in their bodies. So you can be healthier. It's, clinically, you can be healthier by being confident, by being optimistic. And this confidence and this optimism comes through God depositing in you a reassurance that everything is going to be all right. That if you're called for his purpose, that everything's going to work out for your good. And one of the things that God wants us to know is that he is giving us this template to get us to the point of confidence and to rejoice. And so we're going to talk more in detail about that confidence. We're going to talk a little bit in more detail about uh, how God is uh, using this template to allow us to live victoriously. But the bottom line is this. Because God is taking us through these experiences to build up our immunity to fear, to build up our immunity to, to negativity, to build up our immunity against those things so that we can be the salt of the earth. When everyone else is scared, when everyone else is fearful, we can stand flat-footed and give assurance that everything's going to be all right, that nothing is going to destroy us, nothing is going to disturb us because we believe God. And it's going to be just as it was told us and it can't be any other way. And so when we think about that, um, I just wanna reassure you today that this may have been an excellent day for you. Uh, and there may be some days along this week that may be challenging for you. These are going to be the times for you to refer back to this template. Try to understand what's going on. Try to acknowledge that yes, these things do happen to us. Then look for God to give you hope and then enter into prayer and allow him through fervent prayer to download in your spirit that necessary information that's going to allow you to be confident and allow you to rejoice. This is what God wants to do for us, people of God, and I just encourage you uh, to be mindful of that. So we're going to close out in prayer, and we're going to just take a moment to just thank God for this template. We're going to also thank God for giving us this, this spiritual um, uh, herd immunity, where that if there's two or three of us that are touching and agreeing, if there's just four or five of us that have that mindset of confidence, it can help a whole host of people who might be fearful at the moment, because they will see that confidence that we have, just as contagious as a disease is, confidence can be contagious uh, when it is spiritually uh, administered from God. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for another day. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your love. We thank you for all that you do. And we thank you for this time that we've all taken out of our busy schedules just to come and share in group care. We appreciate what you're doing for each of us individually, but we also appreciate what you're doing for us collectively, being able to edify one another, being able to build up one another, to be able to support one another, and to be able to encourage one another. Lord, be at the very center of what we do. Bless us, Lord God, that this uh, word that has gone forward today would minister to those that are in tune right now as well as those that will tune in later. We want you to be lifted up. We want you to be glorified. 
and we want you to cover each and every one that's represented here, them and their families. And we will be careful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we thank God. And so, again, we just want to um, remind those essential workers that we've got you covered. We're, we're praying for you every day. We appreciate all that you do. We appreciate uh, the sacrifices that you're making. And we're going to continue to pray for you. And we're going to do our part. Meaning that if it's not essential for us to go out, we're going to stay home. And we're just going to continue to pray for you. We're going to continue to lift you up. And we're just expecting God to do something amazing for everybody uh, during the season. Uh, but while we're waiting for a lot of this to be turned around, God, we were going to follow this template. And we're going to trust and believe that you're in control. And so thank you for all tuning in. I would just encourage you, be sure to share. Uh, take the time to just share it so that everyone that you know can have access to the information. Also encouraging you, you can always tune in to our, our Bible studies, which are on Tuesday nights at 7 uh, p.m. Uh, Central Time. You can also tune in uh, to our Sunday morning worship, which is at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time. Uh, Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday, we have Midday Motivation at 12.15 p.m. Central Time. And then we also have Empowerment Prayer on Thursdays, uh, and we have our Sunday School on Sunday mornings at 10. Um, you can avail yourself of any of these services, and we appreciate you. Uh, pray for us as we pray for you. Uh, and again, I just encourage you, if you don't have any essential business out in the street, I encourage you to stay home. God bless.